excuse me. Just one second. I'm gonna move that a little bit. Excuse me. <clears throat> hey, welcome to British Cook. Uh, thank you for joining me here. Short notice. Fantastic to see everyone. The Endeavouring family is already here. That's brilliant. It's nearly 2am. I'm sorry, I'll try and be quiet. Uh, the Endeavouring family are based in North Korea. Not North Korea. They're based in South Korea, I think. Uh, so it must be quite late there. Um, I do apologise for the late notice on the uh, live stream and um, the uh, the lack of how or how I look. To be honest with you, <coughs> you're up clean. That's fantastic. Um, it's uh, at two o'clock in the morning. That's quite strange. Yeah. Hey, Dan's in the house creating fundamentals. Fantastic to see you. Um, bit of a last minute live stream this one. Um, reason being. Uh, I plan to do lots of different things today and do a cooking video and it hasn't quite worked. Not not worked, it just hasn't quite happened due to different things that happened today. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here to talk about a little bit what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks and months, which is really, really exciting. Got a couple little things coming up. <laughs> Brilliant. A um, couple different things coming up. That's really funny. Um, Number one, uh, the title of this is Old English Recipes. Now there's a reason for that. Uh, quite a few people have been asking about older recipes and uh, more traditional stuff. So I'm going to be doing an awful lot more of that coming up very, very soon. But this is a really cool bit. I've got a recipe book from, I think, 1901 and another one from about 1897. And um, they're British recipes and they're almost like long forgotten recipes. Um, so it's stuff that's not just like your toe in the hole or you know like basic British stuff but it's, it's like classic stuff um, but I need to try and change some of that into recent measurements excuse my breathing I'll tell you one thing the gingerbread in that book to make gingerbread it asks for six pounds of flour now clearly if you had gingerbread with six pounds of flour your gingerbread would probably be about eight kilos by the time you finished it. Um, so I need to sort of go through it and pick out something that people can make now because some of the ingredients are a little bit obscure as well. Um, so that's what's going to be happening there. Next recipe I'm doing um, is someone asked in the live stream. I'm really sorry, I can't remember your name. I should know the name of the person that asked me. I've also been asked in my comments as well if I can make a um, British trifle. So I'm going to be doing a British trifle, I'm going to be filming that a little bit later today. So I'm just looking at the, um, the chat, ah, it's taking a minute to catch up. Uh, Dan, create fundamentals, what's the connection actually like? Can you see me okay at the moment? Or anyone? Yeah, you'd be in a gulag, definitely, uh, Vanessa. Hi Kate, great to see you here, thank you very much for joining me. Sorry, it's a little bit slow on the chat. Hiya Franny, brilliant to see you. <coughs> it's a bit blurred. That's not good. Yeah, I, I'm trying to, the, the internet connections, uh, Kate, you probably know this, being from Cornwall yourself, are terrible sometimes down here. I'm trying to do live stream something I really want to do, but the, the connection, you just can't get any better. It's just rubbish, awful. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, Penny's Yorkshire pudding recipe. Okay, so Kate's... Kate, did you not see my toe in the hole? Uh, mind you, Yorkshire puddings are a little bit different when you cook them on their own. Um, I did a Yorkshire pudding in my toe in the hole uh, a little while back. That was really cool. Um, so how is everyone today? Really appreciate you all coming. Uh, as I said, I've got a couple of exciting things, or well, exciting for me anyway, to talk about a bit later. So it'd be really cool to have everyone here.
Okay, so Dan can see me, Dan from Create Fundamentals, he can see me but it's grainy. Franny says it looks great. Thank you, Franny. I really appreciate that. That's good. Um, 7.20. Okay, right, so thank you, thanks, Dan. I appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, it looks fine to me. It's not doing anything like it normally does when it goes blurry, but it's uh, not quite... The connection is terrible. Okay, so the echo I can't really fix. Um, that's why I don't film in here very often. Uh, this is Cottage Kitchen. Um, the cottage is what was it made in? Uh, it was originally 1790, and then made into livable accommodation in 1810, from what I understand. Um, the walls are about five six foot thick and uh, <clears throat> the the floor has no insulation so it's slates on on almost mud i suppose uh, like slate floors um i can't really do much about the echo unfortunately i'll, I'll try and film somewhere else normally that's why <coughs> hi dennis great to see you here I'm glad you can see me just about and hear me. That's always really good. Is there anything you want to ask me about at all, Dennis? Connection. So we've got uh, Nancy in the house as well. Your brand strategist. Great to see you, Nancy. Always turn up for my live streams. Really appreciate that. Um, just been talking about a recipe book. Uh, or two, actually, I've got, which are from the early 1900s, uh, British cooking. And it's almost like Victorian stuff, which is something which I'm going to look into a little bit more over the next few weeks uh, once I get back on track. Um, so I'm going to be looking to do more old English style cooking and British style cooking. Um, but I need to make the recipes much smaller. So I need to cut the amounts because like the gingerbread works out about eight pounds of gingerbread. And I mean, I love gingerbread, but that's a bit too much for me. Give me one second um, to grab my tea. And so, as far as cooking goes, I keep being requested for two different things at the moment, which is um, the shepherd's pie, I keep being asked for. I'm going to be doing a video on that quite soon. And also the um, what I'm about to film, which is going to be a trifle, a British trifle. Um, so I'll be showing people how to make a trifle. Which would be cool. Uh, I love making trifle. I love eating trifle, obviously, looking at me. That's really good. Um, and then I'm going to be moving into the Easter stuff, uh, releasing a bit of um, stuff around about Easter. Being honest with you, I probably won't do an awful lot on that. I might just do one or two local things. I did think about saffron, saffron based recipes, which are very popular in Cornwall. Um, and you know, stuff close to my heart and pretty simple. <coughs> Hi, Stephen Bishop. Thank you very much for letting me know. You can see me, but I'm a bit grainy. It could just be stubble. Who knows? Could just be a little bit of, you know, a bit of the old stubble from not shaving. Uh, I expect it probably is grainy though. Dan, thanks for letting me know about the uh, lack of echo. It's really reassuring to know there's no echo your end. Um, I guess it varies a little bit wherever we are. Kate, cheese scone recipe. If you have you seen the scone recipe I did, because if you, I think if you add about 50, 50 or seventy five grams of cheese to the scone recipe which I did, it should work. They won't rise as much as they do in my video uh, because the cheese is obviously quite heavy. Uh, another thing you can do is actually just bake the scones and then cheese dump them. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that before when you're cooking stuff. Make the ice and then literally cover it in cheese and chuck it in the oven. Uh, or even blowtorch it. Um, that's something which I've just picked up, is a little cooking, cooking blowtorch. Not that I'm going to be using an awful lot, but it will, might be quite handy. <coughs> Your brand strategist has no echo here. Hey, refined looks in the house as well. I've got Gabriella. I think you all sort of know each other, otherwise I'd be introducing you all. Um, so we've got 
uh, Dan from Create Fundamentals, we've got Kate, um, we've got Stephen Bishop, Corey, and uh, <laughs> Kate as well. Um, if anyone's watching this on review, uh, Dan from Creative Fundamentals has got a fantastic channel uh, for helping you uh, learn how to grow your YouTube, um, specifically if you're new to it, uh, although there's an awful lot that people can learn by just watching his videos. Uh, so if you want to grow your channel, um, that's definitely worth checking out Creative Fundamentals. Um, we've also got <coughs> in here Hi Franny, sorry Franny, the, the chat's a little bit slow. We've also got in here uh, the Endeavouring family, we've got a vlog, I think, style uh, channel in South Korea, not in North Korea, in South Korea. Uh, they could do all sorts of different cool stuff. And we've got in here as well, um, <coughs> your brand strategist, who does videos on Facebook and on growing your social media. And we've also got, sorry, last one, I can't, I don't want to forget anyone at all. Uh, we've got uh, Gabriella from Refined Look, who does loads of natural, uh, healthy, healthy, like shampoo, uh, natural stuff. Hi, Corey. Um, sorry, my chat's a bit of a mess here, to be honest with you. So, right, let's get back on it. Okay, first of all, Franny, I'm very sorry, your message didn't come through to a second ago. Uh, when I'm scrolling through, sometimes they come up just afterwards. So, Thanks a lot, I know you're here. Uh, fantastic to have you here as well. Okay, um, what else have we got here? We've got Corey, Corey from Illinois. Uh, Corey, great to see you again, mate. Uh, I've just been talking a little bit about what I'm gonna be doing uh, with the channel. I'm not gonna bore everyone again with it uh, for a minute, um, but basically I'm gonna be cooking out of um, very old recipe books. That's a long short bit. Um, what do you all think about that? <coughs> Kate said she's got burst custard powder. That's fantastic, Kate. I'm glad you've got a bit of burst custard powder. Is it hard to get in France? Kate's in France. I mean, the thing is, it's uh, it's nice that she Kate's from my local area. I've known Kate for, for 20, 30 years, probably on and off, uh, when I was a lot younger. Um, but yeah, it must be hard to get stuff in France. Okay. Um, Okay, Dennis, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I think I need to try and do this in, in a way that, because there are like a lot of people in the world that, that don't drink, and it's not I don't want to, uh, I'm worried about offending people, it's just that um, it's something which I've, when I did a couple of alcohol-based uh, recipes, which I'm, I'm quite happy with, I don't really mind doing them, um, I, had a loss, I had a lot of uh, negative, negativity from that. But I do think it'd be a good idea, if I'm cooking something, to say to people, if you want to learn more, uh, come to my website and I've got a list of other things that go with it there. Um, so it's definitely a really good idea. Um, you know, and especially if I'm, I am talking about meat pies and stuff like that. Uh, talking of which, I should be, fingers crossed, to be doing something with a brewery, a local brewery quite soon. Um, I also last week had a photographer uh, come down who I spoke to. Uh, potentially something really interesting happening there, which is really good. Um, really looking forward to that. And a few other things as well. Um, the Cornwall stuff, I want to take you all outside, but the weather is awful again. We had a storm a couple of weeks ago, we've got one back now as well. So I would like to be showing you the best of Cornwall Cornish producers, but am I going to go outside in this weather and try and show you? All you'll see is fog and mist, I promise you. <coughs> Uh, Kate, yeah, you can use blowtorch if you want to. Um, you're welcome, Dan. No problem at all. Kate wants some trifle. Sounds good to me. Pardon me? A tea menu and put together. I see many great pics online, UK places, but how to at home. Um, I've just done, I've done a recipe on scones. What I probably will do, because I've done so much around clock cream recently, and the British cream tea. I'm gonna to probably finish it all off with the British cream uh, tea video. Um, that seems like a popular idea from people. I don't know what you all think. <coughs> but what I'd like to do with the British cream tea is actually show you a bit of outside. And at the moment, it's, it's really been bad weather the last few weeks. Not very good at all. Um, so 
that's something which I need to wait for a break in the weather, really. Go out, do a little bit of filming, show you a bit of pretty, pretty stuff. Um, I'm surrounded by it here, it's amazing, it's beautiful. <coughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, you have to get sent over, okay, not surprised. Franny, it probably will be. I'm not completely decided yet. I mean, they are Victorian recipes and they are things like I've never heard of before. Um, different types of suet puddings and, and different types of um, dumplings. Um, so it'll be interesting to see because the, the recipes in the book are like for cooks. So they're like, you know, literally like eight pounds, which is like four kilos of like gingerbread. That's a recipe. So I need to look into how I can change that a little bit. And I want to make sure that it's things that people can make at home as well. So some spices and herbs I can get, I know, um, but I'm not sure that people abroad can. And it's actually becoming quite important to me that people from everywhere can make these things because, uh, you know, it's a, a really important thing. <coughs> okay. So, who have we got? Okay, so yeah, okay. And Dennis says again, a tea menu put together. So as I said, Dennis, that, that's certainly someone I'm looking at, doing like um, a bit of history on a couple of different things around the cream tea uh, and actually showing it, but with a bit of a surprise as well. Um, I won't say any more, but let's just say it could be quite cool because a lot of people recognize, or could recognize a place from TV because most places around here, obviously a lot of places are very historic and end up on TV and movies quite a lot. Um, <coughs> hey Kate, Kate uses my clock green recipe, fantastic. And Kate's from Cornwall, what, what better recommendation could you get than that? You know, someone from Cornwall who's moved to France makes your clock cream at home, that's amazing. Did you know that Clock of Cream was in the news the other day? National news about Jam First, that PR stunt. <coughs> Stephen Bishop, you can get Burr's Custard Powder in California. That must cost quite a lot of money, I'd imagine, uh, to buy over there. Because uh, I can't, Franny, I, why, Franny, how did you put out the one word I can never pronounce? Uh, Kedgeri, I think it's called. I can never pronounce it. Um, a little bit like that. Um, I mean, that's another idea, um, but that's not quite what we're looking at at the moment. I'm looking at stuff that's much older than that. Um, uh, Vanessa has a Mrs. Be Mrs. Beaton's. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, um, that's great. So that's, you know, you, yeah, again, the terminology for me is a bit simpler uh, in the British cooking books because it's not changed a massive amount. Um, but it's so partially written, I almost want to read it out because it's like real proper English, not how we speak now. Like, you know, when you watch a movie and they speak in a certain way, like the way they speak to the ladies or the way the ladies speak to the gentlemen, it's actually written like that. The recipe is, it's amazing. It, it blows me away. Because um, nowadays we're like, rub this, do that, do this, do that, and that's it. And it's like, you know, do so-and-so, so-and-so, until... This and it's like it's quite cool. Um, it's quite good in that sense. Yeah, that's amazing. So you can get a Walmart. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Hi Stephanie, great to see you here. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Wow, Stephanie, you can get it at the World Market. You can get it at Walmart. Corey says, uh, Franny, have I lost you somewhere? I expect I probably have. And um, that, yeah, that is old. I mean, that is an old recipe book, definitely. Um, I think the ones that, um, I think I've got one that's 1897 and one that's 1901. Um, but it's of that era, the Edwardian-Victorian uh, sort of era. I mean, Victorian was quite a lot earlier, actually. Edwardian, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I need to get my eyebrows sorted out. Okay, right, so what have we got here? Just going to scroll back. Sometimes, 
these messages don't come in order. <coughs> I mean, that's amazing. I, I would imagine that book probably in America is probably worth quite a lot of money, uh, Vanessa, you know, or, you know, certainly very interesting historically as well. Um, that's really, really cool. Um, going back to my pasty recipe, in there, there's a recipe, I think, from about 1500s for pasties, and clot of cream is mentioned in, and people like, clot of cream's a horrible name, and yeah, I understand that. Um, like, the connotation of clotted now means other stuff, but it's actually spelt with a C, L, and the old um, T, so almost like an F, like an F with the cross in it. Uh, and they made poems about it in the 15th century. How cool is that? About making clock cream in the 15th century. Clearly viral even then. <coughs> okay, so you can get burst custard in America. That's really worthwhile knowing. Um, because I'm going to be using a lot of this soon. And it's in Walmart. That's really useful to know. Walmart and the other place as well. Okay. It is jam on, on first, definitely. Um, absolutely jam on first. That, uh, I can't really speak, but to me that looked like a PR stunt because when it all launched, there were press releases. Um, no one in Cornwall would have allowed that to go out. The people in the restaurant would have known. The people that work at Land Hydrock, um, they, they know. They're all like really Cornish. So uh, the fact that they launched that with the hashtags uh, and then the next day they had the t-shirts printed and the buttons and the badges. Uh, amazing. Um, but definitely jam on first. All the way for me. Hey Jafito. <laughs> I can never say that either. I get tongue tied. Hi Jeff. Great to see you here as well. Um, thank you very much. Nice to see you buddy. Great to see you. Uh, okay, we've got Franny Apple Hedgehog. I have no idea what that is, being honest with you. If you could explain it to me a little bit in writing, um, when I think about hedgehogs, I think about like a melon rolled in tinfoil with lots of cocktail sticks and cheese and pineapple on it. That's what that's, that's just what springs to my mind. Hey, thanks, Kate, thanks, Corey. That really appreciate that. All the thumbs up it does really help. Um, one thing that would massively help me at the moment uh, is if um, any of you have any spare time. Uh, and want to just run uh, a couple of my videos or watch a few of my videos. Um, if you go to the main page for British Cook, you'll see playlists there. And if there's some, you know, just flick through, uh, not flick through a video, but have a look and see if there's any videos there that interest you. Because I keep getting people saying to me, have you got a recipe for scones or uh, do you know how to do make clock cream? So obviously, like, I've done the videos, but people aren't seeing them for some reason. So that would be brilliant. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Kate, as I did my pasty video recipe, uh, I put uh, clock cream in there, um, along with a couple other little bits as well, which is good. <clears throat> Stephen, I'm really, really pleased uh, that you, you tried the clock cream recipe and it worked. I mean, it's really tough because people from different parts of the world are trying to make it and they don't necessarily have the same sort of cream as we do in the UK. Um, I've literally just had a comment from someone in Thailand asking me how long to leave it in the oven because it's 30 degrees outside, 34 degrees. So, you know, it's good fun um, trying to help people out and trying to give them knowledge and trying to empower them to do their own cooking. Uh, the clot of cream thing is just, it's really cool. I love it. I love the fact that people enjoy it and they can make it at home. Um, Uh, Nancy, your brand strategist, last thing I think I mentioned about um, you was about your channel, uh, probably a little while back, but don't worry about it. We're just talking, generally speaking, about a few different bits. It's showing me messages are there, but I can't see them for some reason. Uh, there's a blue arrow down, but it's not actually showing them yet. So I'm going to take two seconds to grab a, a sip of tea a minute. <coughs> and take a breath as well. I don't know if any of you have um, done a lot of lives. I know that Dan Courier certainly does lives. Uh, on Create Fundamentals, uh, where he helps people, uh, does channel reviews and stuff like that. But I find all of a sudden I, I forget to breathe. And I forget to drink as well. So, as I said, it's all about the British cooking. Take a sip, definitely. 
Um, so going forward, we're going to be doing more British cooking. Uh, next things coming up will be um, shepherd's pie and trifle, uh, which should hopefully be out by the end of the week. I have also recorded a giant chocolate brownie, uh, which is like a two and a half kilo, maybe three kilo, uh, 22 inch long uh, chocolate brownie. Um, I recorded that the other day for a bit of fun. Um, I will get back to cooking meat and savoury dishes quite soon as well. <clears throat> but Stephen, I'm really pleased the clock cream recipe worked well for you. Excuse me, sorry. Um, <laughs> Kate, I'm really pleased you like the clock cream recipe and it works right for you. Did you use creme de... creme de... is... is it, I can't say it. Creme de Izingi, uh, is, isn't he? Uh, for it. Thanks, Gabriella. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things I just kind of talk, 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 and then forget to breathe or take a sip of water. So it's not very good, really. Um, thanks, Stephanie. I don't know if any of you uh, are on my Facebook or have added me on Facebook. Um, I have a Facebook group. Uh, which if you put British Cook into the search, you'll get British Cook come up as a page in a group. The group, uh, if you're in the group, you get more notifications than you do if you're on the page. Uh, click like for the page and click join to join the group. Um, it can take me a little while to get back to everyone. Uh, that's just the situation, unfortunately. I do try and reply to everyone. Uh, I reply to people in my live streams a lot more I do, just generally speaking. So if you want to get more replies from me, <coughs> Or more interaction, join me in the live stream. Uh, that's definitely the way forwards. <clears throat> Will I be doing a ham for Easter? Uh, actually, Franny, being honest with you, that was actually on the back of my mind. I have done two ham videos already, uh, one of which did really, really well, and one which was like a Christmassy ham. Um, I'd like to do a big ham uh, on the bone. Um, but at the same time, um, it's about timing. Um, it's certainly been an interesting thing to do. Uh, I'm just not sure if I may have been a bit, little bit late for the Easter, um, Easter period. Um, it's something which I definitely need to do at some point in Easter ham. Um, I do love ham. I love cooking them as well. And I've got quite a few different recipes for them which I use at home. So I, I tend to brine mine, uh, generally speaking, in something. Uh, <laughs> last two have been in coca-cola because that's you would not believe that cooking a ham in coca-cola doesn't make it does not make it sweet it does make it a little bit sweeter than it may be but it doesn't make it very sweet it tastes delicious it stays so moist it's amazing really amazing i should be looking down here there you go is that where i'm meant to look a little hole a little camera down there <clears throat> thanks stephanie i really appreciate you saying that's a very kind thing you say uh, that I'm doing all right. I'm getting away with it just about. So that's really, really pleasing. Um, yeah, Franny, I'm, that, that ham, Easter ham, I'm going to have a good think about that tonight. Um, probably I could well do it. Um, it's not about, I need to try and explain, it's not about whether I want to do it or not. It's whether it fits with what I'm trying to finish off at the moment. I'm about two and a half or three weeks behind where I want to be with videos. <clears throat> Brownie, yep. Yeah. I'm glad about the idea of the brownie, Dennis. I'll get that one up soon. Kate, thank you so much. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was amazed. I sat there probably on Christmas Eve, I think it was, and about four or five people posted my Facebook page pictures of the ham they made. Uh, we used my recipe, which is brilliant. Um, so gratifying to know people actually cooking my food and enjoying it, and that really is working for them. <coughs> Stephanie, that's exactly what I'm looking to do with the Victorian cooking book. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, the weird thing is, at the moment, the number one dish in the UK is a curry. Um, that's what everyone eats in, in England. Uh, but that's not what people think we eat. So I kind of, I kind of need to um, make sure I focus on, on that. Um, I mean, I've certainly done a few already. I've done a British uh, cream tea nearly. I've done the scones, I've done the clot cream. Um, I've done uh, the toad in the hole, which is very traditional, um, but there's a lot more that I'm going to be doing, including, but 
I mean, I think really that book will probably cover a lot of that. Corey, yeah, brilliant. Thanks, uh, Kate, for letting me know I'm the right one. Um, I'm on your Facebook. Hey, Mary Lou. Great to have you here. I'm not sure if I met you before in the live stream, but I'm really pleased you're here. Uh, we're often here um, chatting away, uh, asking questions, and, and actually normally I'm cooking. This is the first one I've done for a long time. I'm not actually cooking anything yet. Although I will be cooking a trifle later. <laughs> Definitely. So I'm going to be making, well, I could say cooking, I'm going to be making a, a trifle, which is a British dessert. Um, lots of different ways to make it. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, going to be doing it how I normally do it. So, which will be really good. <clears throat> Give me two seconds, just waiting for the chat to load up. I can see there's people that have written there, but it just takes a little while sometimes to display on my phone. <clears throat> I'm glad it was good, Kate, uh, that you tried that um, ham recipe. Um, as I said, it was lovely to find out at Christmas that a lot of people had done it. And then Pirate FM, which is the regional, uh, regional radio station, featured my clock cream recipe as well, without being asked. Lovely. Brilliant. And, and that's what's really, really good about this, is that I'm being shared by local media without even really asking about it. So it's fantastic. You know, like a lot of these things you have to pay for normally. Um, uh, which is good uh, to be giving out free. Uh, Franny, yeah, Victor, this, this this recipe book is about this thick. It's about three inches thick, and it's full of Victorian Victorian and Edwardian foods. So, like the mincemeat, for example, has like I don't know if you know what a mincemeat pie is. Uh, um, it's be called like a mince pie in England. It has meat in it. Like you know, they cut meat out of them, and I think the first World war. They cut meat out of minced meat pies in like the first world war because of um, basically lack of meat. Um, <clears throat> so stuff like that is just really surprising. Yeah, I did. I did a live stream of a really simple curry. What I should probably do at some point, Dennis, is re go back and redo my live streams into even more easy, easy to watch formats, shorter videos. Stargazy pie. <laughs> It's got blackbirds in isn't it? I'm pretty sure. They used to eat blackbirds and all sorts of things. Robins and they're like literally they would eat anything. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think part of it will probably be talking about stuff as well. <laughs> so Stephanie, but you, Toad in the Hole is, it was also called Pig in a Hole as well some places. Um, toad in the Hole itself originally was any kind of meat, really, not just sausages, any kind of meat thrown into a batter. And the batter was very cheap to make, obviously, uh, the, the surrounding batter. So the batter would be to fill you up and then a small amount of meat, scrap meat, really. Um, and then it became more of a pub classic sort of food. Um, but we talk about pubs, I mean, Christ, the pub in Foy was open in 1540, uh, 1558, uh, something like that, you know, you, how can, how can you get your head around that? I mean, they've still got the same floor in it. That's amazing. But <clears throat> you think about all the people have been to that place, the, literally smugglers, all the things that have happened, the death, the murders, or well, shouldn't have said that on the live stream, but the, you know, deaf people. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's crazy stuff, but it's good. Uh, ox tongue, minx pie. Yeah, I mean, Franny, it, the thing is, it really does depend, you know, there's no right, I'm not saying there's right or wrong way with anything at all, but there's so many different variations of anything. I mean, like, I'm going to make a trifle uh, later, and you could probably do, I don't know, with jam, without jam, with alcohol, without alcohol, uh, with strawberries, with raspberries, with blueberries, with compote, with uh, puree, uh, with no puree, with, with things on top. With sprinkles on top, with ice cream, not with ice cream, not with ice cream, with double cream, single cream, or clock cream. You could do it uh, in different layer variations. You can do it with sponge cake, you can do it with Swiss roll, you can do it like, 
I don't know, so many different ways, and that's what I like about food. Um, all I can do is do what I enjoy and what I know works. And what's, that's exactly what I do with every single recipe I upload. I know it works because I do it so many times myself. I've, or like the clot cream I've done for years, the ham I've done for years. Um, I should have done the ham as a big, big ham. I, is it right that in America your hams come ready cooked? Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out because um, like we buy it raw, obviously. You can buy them cooked here. But if you're looking to marinate things, or if you're looking to um, like add flavours to them, obviously it's much easier to do when they're not cooked. Uh, is that common? Like in, in, in America, can you buy pork raw to make into ham? Or is it mainly canned stuff? Or is it normally like um, already cooked for you? Could you let me know? One sec. <coughs> Um, yeah, Franny, I mean, I, <laughs> tongue isn't something for me. I mean, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I eat tongue uh, and like the, uh, uh, is it called chitlets, like the threaded intestines. I mean, I do eat sausages, which obviously made out of those, but <clears throat> th there's a lot of stuff which um, I will eat and there's some stuff I won't. I mean, there's stuff, you know, obviously brain was really popular, brawn. Um, I'm not going to be going and buying a big set and boiling it up because uh, I think that that's probably too strong for today's sort of people. Um, but who knows, I might do. Um, okay, so Stephen, you try shepherd's pie tonight with common spice packet, is that cheating? No, it's not. It's not. If you don't, if you're not sure how to make something, then why not try it with, with a spice mix? I mean, to me, that's not really cheating. Um, if I was going to cook it and, uh, and I got found to be chucking some like, spice mix in it by my friends or family, it wouldn't be so cool. But, you know, everyone cooks with different uh, abilities and everyone's here to learn, aren't they? So we're all learning how to cook different things. Um, and I think that like cooking, cooking from a spice packet is no big deal. Um, you know, I mean, my dinner, let me just show you my dinner. You know, everyone thinks maybe I cook loads. I do cook loads. My dinner, fajita kit, tonight, it's gonna be fajitas. You know, so tonight I'm gonna use the seasoning from this. I'm gonna chuck in some chicken, fry some peppers, and I'm gonna have some fajitas. You know, it's sour cream, cheese, it's going to be finger foods. Be lovely, um, but Christmas a couple of Christmas ago, I cooked Tex-Mex for twelve of us um, at Christmas. Uh, not actually Christmas Day, but around Christmas, and I did a whole spread of, of Tex-Mex. And that time, obviously, I actually used the right spices and did everything by hand. Um, but it's all context. I mean, you know, you can't, you cannot spend as a normal person hours and hours cooking in the kitchen because we simply don't have the time. We have jobs, we have family, you know, most people do have jobs or family anyway. Um, you know, so it's just something I have to do sometimes. So spice mix is no big deal at all. <clears throat> um, Franny, I think this whole, this whole thing's gonna be a video of my favorite meals. Like, literally, everything I'm doing is my favourite stuff. Um, you know, generally speaking, I love ham. I love pasties. I mean, Christ, I really love pasties. Um, I love clot cream. You know, so I am slowly working through what I really enjoy. Uh, to do a video where I've cooked 12, 15 different dishes uh, would require a massive amount of work, um, firstly, which is not a problem, but it would probably take a day or two to actually get it all ready. Everything I like. Um, and then it would be a case of it would look no good on film anyway because it probably wasn't very fresh. Um, but I can certainly talk about my favourite things, definitely. Um, <clears throat> but I am slowly working through my favourite sort of foods uh, with this. Um, I think Kate's one in the 4th Street in Foy. Um, it may be turned to a shop now. It's certainly, you can see the original flooring in there as uh, from the 1500s. And like the smuggler hatches where they used to wreck the ships and then smuggle the alcohol and stuff like that. 
or whatever sort of loot they found from wrecking the ships. Um, there's also the, all the holes and stuff in the cliffs where they used to do the same thing in Charlestown. I uh, don't want to bore anyone too much, but yeah, King of Prussia is quite cool. Got lots of steps to walk down. Okay, so Stephanie, but Fanny, I'm really going to have a good think about your, your ham idea. I really like the idea of doing a, a ham um, for, for Easter and it's sort of Easter sort of an idea with it. So that's a really good idea and thanks for that. Um, but yeah, favourite foods, I, I am working sort of slowly, so. <coughs> Okay, so your hams come, right, so they come cooked and spiral cut. So, like, if I was to do a, a recipe on how to cook a ham for American audience, I'd have to take that into account. So you can't add any real flavour to the meat. You can only baste it, maybe. Maybe put some honey mustard on it, or, or some, I'm just using that as a really rough example, really don't, and chuck it in the oven, or cranberry, or, you know, mix it like that. But, um, so really that's not... That's not really very cool. Uh, do, you, do you guys have butchers over there? Can you buy like raw pork leg? <laughs> like a, not a whole leg obviously, but like, can you buy raw pork loin or like a gammon um, raw? Or does it all come, is it literally all cooked and canned? <coughs> Okay, thank you Franny for letting me know that. So you can buy it from the butcher's raw. Okay, um, I'm way behind the messages. I'm so I've got about 12 messages here. I'm just gonna scroll through and try and catch up to everything really, really quickly. Okay, so first of all, thank you all for being here. Uh, so Franny said you can buy it from there. That's brilliant, that's fantastic. And worthwhile knowing as well. Uh, I, want, I need to know if you can find it in Walmart, Costco, things like that because uh, you know, I want to make these recipes available to as many people as I can, really. Um, <coughs> yeah, Stephanie, it sounds really cool. If you could do me a massive favour, could you look... Uh, I don't know if you're on Facebook or not. Could you look for the um, British Cook Facebook group? Um, there's a Facebook page for British Cook, uh, but there's actually a Facebook group. And could you join that and send me a message on that? would be great. Um, um, the message has come through all at once, sorry about that. Okay, so Stargazy Pie, I did mention Stargazy Pie, Kate, I'm not sure what I missed there. Um, I certainly can't talk about that live anyway. Um, but yeah, so, <coughs> sounds good. Okay, so Stephen says that the fresh hams are always pre-cooked. Okay, right, so, needs to be something that works on pre-cooked. Oh, <laughs> That, what, I don't know, that always baffles me. But you can you can buy hams here as well, pre-cooked, so it's not that unusual. Um, uh, hi, Messi, great to see you. Okay, so if you want to do that, you need to go to a proper butcher. Okay, all pre-cooked. Smoked hams are very popular. Advanced ordering, okay. Right, so you can buy pork loins and pork roasts at every grocery store. Sorry about this, I'm just scanning through a lot of messages here. I've come through all at once. Okay, so that's all good news. That's really good news. Um, so, bear in one sec. Just going to pop out for two minutes because my battery warning light is flashing. So I will be back in literally two minutes. Uh, bear with me while I grab that a sec. <laughs> Right, I'm back. Sorry I didn't expect to be that long. Um, give me two seconds, I'll get it sorted out in a minute. <laughs> so, 
So even when I'm not actually cooking, it's always chaos. There we go. <laughs> so <coughs> uh, yeah, I'm a bit better, Franny, to be honest. You're not that great still, but um, that's why I'm a little bit behind my videos, partially. Okay, so. <laughs> One second. Have I lost everyone? I think maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> hey, have I lost everyone? I've probably lost a few people, possibly. Um, I just had to go and grab my charge quickly because uh, my battery was about to die. Um, I did intend to sort of come on quickly, but I didn't realise I'd be talking so long, which is not a problem, it's good. It's great to chat. <coughs> Let's just move that around a little bit. <coughs> Yeah, I enjoy making stews, Fanny, definitely. Um, there's lots of those as well to choose from, which is, uh, which is good. Um, I think I'm probably going to have to make a move in about five or ten minutes, uh, just look at the time sec. But it has been great fun. Um, and thank you very much for everyone that is still here. If you're still here, could you do me a massive favour and just let me know you're still here? I'm not sure when I plugged it in, whether I lost the internet a little bit, I have just had one message through, um, yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to be doing. <coughs> Fantastic, really pleased to hear it. Um, how, how do I, I'm not sure if I say your name properly, is it Mete? M-E-T-T-E? -E? It's awful, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm very sorry. Uh, hi Corey, um, yeah I love, I'll tell you what Franny, I love stews. Um, I did start to do some cooking, some budget cooking, uh, beginning of the month, uh, beginning of the year, and I was going to actually um, do more of that and do a lot of stews and stuff. But being honest, with you no one, no one watches the videos. Uh, there's no interest in in that, and maybe it's something which I can look to do again. Um, really, with cooking now, it's going to be what I've talked about. That's what I'm going to be doing coming up. Um, <coughs> so. Uh, hopefully that can keep everyone reasonably happy. Most questions and comments I have are about British food, which makes sense because that's what I, I love, uh, and Cornish food as well, which I'm really, really proud of, uh, proud to be from Cornwall um, and born here, although my mum's from Devon. Um, which is the county next door, which is interesting. <coughs> Franny, I'd love to go to America for a meet and greet, but I'm, I'm quite small at the moment um, in terms of people. Um, perhaps when I get a few more people following me and a few more people interested, that would be something which I'd love to do. Um, that would be more of a, for me, like a dream, if that makes any sense, uh, to go and do this and meet people and to um, share things with people. It'd be awesome. <coughs> ah, Meta. Okay. Meta? Meta? See, to me, that says meta, like metadata, but you might pronounce a T. Is the, is the emphasis on the A or the T? <coughs> Excuse me. Glad you're still here as well, Corey. Fantastic. What I'm going to do, I think, I'm probably going to have um, to... Like metadata, yeah, yeah. Um, wait a second. 
Uh, uh, possibly. Um, it's something which I'm looking into, Franny. Uh, you'll certainly be one of the first people to know if that's the case. Um, I've got a few things I need to get fixed up first of all and check. Um, specifically, mainly because people live in America. A lot of people watch me, uh, Australia. Uh, and probably most, I get quite a few views from the UK, but probably about 80% from around the world. So for me, it'd be easy to find a company that does the UK um, and covers that. But how I do it to America, uh, different states, different shipping, different taxes, um, I need to look into that and try and find out how that will work. Um, so that's on my list, actually, to be fair, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, so certainly you'll be one of the first people to know um, if, that's the, if that's the case. <clears throat> okay. So, if any of you got any more questions about, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a frog. Too much toad and I've got a frog in my th a frog in my throat right now. So, um, what I want to do is to say, if you've got any more questions, uh, please fire away the next couple of minutes, and then what I'll probably do is wrap things up um, because I have to go somewhere uh, in about fifteen minutes. Um, so. But it's been absolutely fantastic to have you all here though. Um, but if you've got any questions, uh, shoot them to me now and I'll try and reply as quick as I can. And I'll probably make a move quite shortly afterwards. <coughs> um, I'm trying to read that message. I'm, I can see, Vanessa, I can see I've got a message from you, but it's frog in the... Frog in the... <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, tone the holes. Yeah, frog in the holes better than the throat. Definitely. Um, I don't know what's wrong this year. Everyone's been sick for weeks uh, in the UK. Like people I meet, they've been like ill since January. It's like March now. Um, there's been a lot of flu around and different types of flu as well. But um, I haven't got flu. I just feel like you know when you feel 110 percent. I feel like probably 65, 70 most of the time. Try different things. Try different things to make, feel, make yourself feel better, try fresh air, try healthy eating, nothing's working, try a lot more coffee, um, you know, so I don't know really what it is, like just fatigue, I think it's just um, the weather as well hasn't really helped. Thanks Franny, I really appreciate that, that's really kind of you. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think probably I'm going to give it two or three more minutes, any more last questions, I'll, I'll uh, pop off and close the chat. Um, but I have really enjoyed talking to you all, so thank you so much for coming. And a, a special thank you to everyone that comes on a regular basis. I mean, it's fantastic to see um, new people here, which I really appreciate you here as well, but um, it's amazing to see people come back and come back and listen to me just waffle about food, which is, uh, <laughs> I would imagine, not the most, in, in, uh, most, can't talk, see, there you go. Coming up to one hour, that's why. As soon as I hit one hour, I stop being able to talk properly. I don't know why. Um, yeah, but you know, today I haven't been cooking, um, but it's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, and as I said, I will be cooking later and doing a bit of a video. Um, so coming up this week will be shepherd's pie. Um, shepherd's pie, which will be <coughs> good. Excuse me. Shepherd's pie and uh, British trifle. Um, so watch out for those. It's going to be really, really good. Really, really nice new videos. Yeah, Franny, I'd love a holiday. <laughs> I'd love a holiday. Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like an option because I'm a few weeks behind with everything. Um, I'm behind with a few different things uh, which I need to get fixed and sorted out quite quickly. So, But that's pretty much going to be it, really. Um, There's a good possibility as well that um, over the next month or two I may be moving, um, not very far. Um, <coughs> so that's a bit of news as well. Somewhere with a different kitchen where I've got no echo. But more to the point where I've got some internet. That's the main main issue I'm having really uh, here with everything is uh, uploading, downloading and the live streams. You, you cannot change it, you cannot upgrade. Um, cannot change it here without getting a satellite link. Looked into it, hundreds of pounds a month. I uh, can't do that, no way. <clears throat> so, 
So, any last questions at all? Anyone want to say hello before I, I close the live stream? Um, I really appreciate you all being here, as I said. Um, going to be cooking some really exciting bits coming up uh, and a lot more British stuff um, and a lot more Cornish as well because I'm really passionate about it too. Hang on a sec. <coughs> Brilliant. Stephanie, make sure you add the, uh, go to the Facebook group, or all of you actually, if you can, go to the Facebook group I've got. Just put British Cook into Facebook. I think it's British Cook Tasty Recipes. <clears throat> and um, that's the group. There is a page as well, but if you like the page, um, it, it doesn't always notify you when I put stuff up. Uh, if you go in the group, generally speaking, the group does notify everyone exactly what I'm doing. So, really, really good, and thank you so much for everyone coming. Um, really, really nice to see you all again. Um, so, really cool stuff coming up, and I will speak to you all soon. Goodbye, Franny. Bye, Corey. Bye, Meta. Uh, not sure who else is still here. Bye, as I say, Corey. <laughs> say goodbye to everyone, but goodbye, everyone. Fantastic. Thanks, Stephanie. Have a great day. And Franny, I'll uh, no doubt speak to you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.